Hi, right, in this episode I'm going to discuss the fates of pyruvate. Now, as I've shown, we've gone through glycolysis in which we've taken glucose, and we've put out 2 NADH, 2 ATP, and some pyruvate. And but now what happens to it after we've used it? So it depends on the oxygen states of the cell and the energy state. High oxygen leads to the TCA cycle, which is the tricyclic acids, and low oxygen leads to anaerobic metabolism. This episode I'm going to be discussing solely anaerobic metabolism and alternatives to the TCA cycle. So, it can either be converted to lactate, which is anaerobic when there's no oxygen, formation of ethanol, and yet again it's anaerobic but in yeast in certain bacteria, um, the formation of acetyl-CoA and the entry into the citric acid cycle. I'll discuss that next episode under the title pyruvate dehydrogenase. So, conversion to lactate. This happens in animals when there's not enough oxygen for tricyclic acid cycle to go ahead or the conversion to acetyl-CoA from pyruvate. And it's when you've not got enough NAD+, it's depleted level. So, pyruvate to lactate regenerates NAD+. Simple. You get your NADH and a proton, go around, become NAD+. The pyruvate is converted to lactate by lactate dehydrogenase. And when oxygen is available again, lactate is converted back to pyruvate. This generally happens during, generally the conversion of lactate takes place during periods of high intensity exercise, or just general anoxia. So, showing the mechanism of reaction, what happens is this, one of these hydrogens, likely the proton, will attack a nucleophile here causing this double bond to jump around and make that an O minus. Later on one of these hydrogens not mentioned will attack this to become an OH group with a hydrogen bonded to this carbon as such. As you can see it's got two hydrogens in the previous time. It still has the negative charge on that oxygen it's just not being displayed on this slide. And lactate and NAD plus are the leaving substrates. So the Cori cycle, or Cori cycle, however you want to pronounce it. Basically, via this pathway, the muscles are likely to be anaerobic during a high intensity exercise and result in the buildup of lactate, which would form lactic acid generally and be bad for the muscles, lead to muscle fatigue. So there was a way to get rid of around this in that while well, glucose is converted to pyruvate, which then converts to lactate, the lactate is transported via the blood to the liver, where it's converted back to pyruvate and then back to glucose via gluconeogenesis, which I'll discuss later on. This prevents a buildup of lactate in the muscles and lactic acid, preventing muscle fatigue during exercise. Very useful mechanism, and as you can see, glucose then leaves the liver again to go back to the muscle to be converted to pyruvate, and that was the cycle, the Cori cycle. So it depends on direction of which it goes, it depends on the NADH NAD plus ratio. So obviously it's different in the liver and the muscle as one is using a lot more oxygen than the other and NADH. So ethanol, I mean students are probably going to be quite familiar with this one, is conversion to alcohol by yeast and some bacteria, it's just a fermentation. So there's two step process to re regenerate NAD plus as we did in lactate in lactate dehydrogenase. You get a pyruvate to acetaldehyde plus CO2, that's where the fizziness comes from beers. And that's catalyzed by pyruvate decarboxylase. TPP is the prosthetic group, and TPP is thiamine pyrophosphate. No, thiamine pyrophosphate, which is Thiamine is an important vitamin that you need, it's one of your B vitamins, it's quite important, I'll discuss that in later episodes on diseases relating to glycolysis. And so yeah, you get your acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde from here, this CO2 is just given off, and go with NADH plus H plus to ethanol and NAD plus, which is catalyzed by alcohol dehydrogenase. Production of alcohol. Anyway, fate of pyruvate depends on this. So that's really fermentation is that simple. Two steps pyruvate to acetaldehyde plus CO2, 
firing a decarboxylase, TDP. Prostatic group is just a cofactor which is tightly bound, so and then get your acetaldehyde plus NADH plus H plus proton to ethanol and NAD plus catalyzed by alcohol dehydrogenase. Now, fates of pyruvate depend on cell energy charge. When you've got high acetyl-CoA ATP, you go back to like gluconeogenesis and like carboxylase. And when you've got low energy, you want to produce a lot more, you go via the TCA cycle via pyruvate dehydrogenase, which will be next episode. So this just shows that you can go back via gluconeogenesis, so a pyru which I'll discuss later on in more depth. This is just a quick overview. So the pyruvates convert to oxaloacetate and use energy from ATP to ADP. And it's just simple after that oxaloacetate these just show the irreversible steps of the glycolysis pathway in reverse so it would be glucose or the hexakinase then PFK1 which will have to use different enzymes and then there's obviously the conversion to pyruvate so as it says gluconeogenesis it's active when there's high acetyl-CoA there's no need to convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA there's already a lot of it Conversion of fatty acids takes place when ATP levels are high and acetyl-CoA this is once pyruvate has been converted to acetyl-CoA it can be converted to fatty acids because it doesn't need to produce more ATP and during anabolic growth pyruvate is aminated basically it's um, had an amine group added to it anabolic growth just means it's basically a metabolism which forms structures Catabolic would be reducing down structures into smaller units, anabolic making bigger units. So you get your pyruvate and your glutamate go over alanine transaminase to form alt alpha ketoglutarate, which is a important step in amino acid pathways and pyruvate to alanine. And you get a pyridoxal 5 phosphate is the prosthetic group and I'll discuss aerobic conditions next time. Thank you very much for listening, I appreciate your time.